Thanks to the supporters of channel member Jason Odendahl. Folks, today's the day. After yesterday's incredible transfer special, we've managed to set ourselves up a non-league to legend starter club all-star game. It's going to be Kettering versus Kings Lynn in our first game in the National League. We now have a squad that includes Alfie Payne, Martel Taylor Crossdale, Connor Stanley, Kings Lynn, our starter team from last year, have former heroes Adam Marriott and Dale Southwell as their starting strikers. This is going to be a little bit special and hopefully we come out on top. Hello and welcome to part 10 of Non-Need to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have those first two games in the National League. We're at home against Kings Lynn and away against Solihull Moors. Since you were last with me, nothing's happened. I've not even pressed continue. If you missed the transfer special yesterday, I strongly recommend you go back and watch it. There was business done. Lots of business done. Um, and we are now in possession of what appears to be a very strong squad. So strong, in fact that the pre-season media preview now has us fourth favourites for the title. That That's going to take some living up to do. But, you know, I'm I'm up for the challenge. Should be a lot of fun. Um, first up, we face Kings Lynn in the All-Star game. That's what I'm calling it. That's what it is. And this is the team that we're putting out there to try and take them on. A few new faces in here mixed in with a returning hero um, and some familiar faces, some new faces. This fate, they've all got faces, I think. Um, new boy, Liam O'Brien is in goal. He's 29 years old. He's a goalkeeper who's got lots of football league experience. Comes in to take over from Adam Collin. Evelyn's mortified. Um, we've got the returning Joe Dunn playing for us at left back, who of course was here on loan last year. Centre-back partnership, another returning loanee in Adam Senior. Partnering our new boy at the back, Syria Q Mayunga, um, who already has 12 international caps at 20 years old. Um, he came in in the summer from Wolves, formerly of Leon, and Ted Malden, who was, of course was here last year, is going to move out to right back. Central midfield, our new captain and the hero of the early stages of the FM20 version of non to Legend, Alfie Payne. If you didn't watch last year, you might not realise Alfie Payne was our captain at Kings Lynn and was incredible. He's now our captain here at Kettering. We're looking for more incredible things from Alfie Payne. He partners in midfield, Lawrence Wooten, who, of course, was here last year and you all love hearing me say Wooten once a day so got to keep him in around the team Phoenix Patterson on the left hand side who was great for us last year right hand side we're going with Jeremy McKendy the new striker slash like utility attacker we brought in from Tottenham it could have just as easily um, been Connor Stanley but Connor Stanley picked up a knock midweek and isn't fully fit so he's going to have to start from down on the bench Connor Stanley a hero of home from a few years ago here on YouTube. And um, we also, there was a shout for um, for Terrell Whitaker to start up front, but he's just not as natural in those wide areas as McKendy is. So McKendy gets the nod over his former Tottenham youth teammate. Spasov's going to be up front, who's in on loan for another year, having scored 25 goals for us last year as part of our promotion push. But we have Martel Taylor Crossdale, one of several strikers lurking, who was a hero for us at South End in non to Legend. Just a few, I say just a few years ago, probably four or five years ago now. Maybe not quite that long. Historians, when was Martel Taylor Crossdale a star for us? And um, so Stanley and Taylor Crossdale starting from the bench. We've got a boot there as a midfield option. Colin to make Evelyn happy. And the other new boy, David Agbon Tahom Tahoma, um, who is a six foot four centre back for if we need a corner. Let's submit the team. Let's see what Kings Lynn are doing. I'm hoping they're playing both Marriott and Southwell up front. Said no opposition manager ever. They're both lethal at non-league. And um, Southwell scored a ton of goals for me in my first ever non-league legend six years ago for Boston, but then did the dirty on us, refusing to sign a new contract and leaving on a free at the end of our promotion season. And Adam Marriott scored a load of goals for us last year in our promotion season. So there's a lot of non-league to legend goals on this pitch today. Um, but apparently we're favourites for the re for a reason. Let's pump those fists. And um, we we've got the special intro. That's how big of a game this is. We're getting the special intro. I love this. Even the game knows it's the all-star game. I'm super excited. I hope you are too. You can see that the ground is currently under renovation. We're having some new seat, some new standing areas put in behind the goal. Um, I was actually asked to change these around to uh, put the latest scores over here. 
just because my face gets in the way of the latest scores, which aren't that important at this time of the year, but obviously do become more important as the season goes on. So if I just set it up correctly now, the only thing I'm really blocking is the Kingsland stats, which you can see on their formation anyway. So come on now, boys, let's, let's start the season as we mean to go on. If we're genuinely in another promotion hunt this season, we need to start well and do well in our home games. We only lost two games all of last season in the National League North. We need to make Latimer Park a fortress again like it was last year. And we need our new boys to gel into this team nice and quickly. I'm desperate to see Alfie Payne on the ball for the first time, as I'm sure anyone who was here this time last year is as well. Marriott has got to be offside there. It is disallowed for offside. But a little early warning of just how dangerous Marriott can be. And Southwell's just as good a finisher. I, I'm not exaggerating when I say, certainly in National League North, those two are consistent 30-goal-a-year 30 30 goal strikers and have been for years now. Um, how they're not football league players, I'm not entirely sure. I think with Southwell, it is a case of he keeps getting teams promoted and then not wanting to go professional, so keeps just lurking around in the non-league. Um, I'm sure that's the story with Dale Southwell. So I'm sure someone will let me know down in the comments. Um, but we've not had a particularly bright start so far. Nothing in the way of an attacking highlight. Although we've got one now. It's an Alfie Payne in swinging corner. Looking for Wooten. It falls to Patterson on the edge of the area. Who shoots from range. What a goal from Phoenix Patterson. We've got all these new stars in. But one of our stars from last year is just making sure that we don't forget about him. That might be goal of the series right there. That is going to take some beating. Don't goals look better when they clatter down off the crossbar like that. Beautiful stuff. What a way to break the deadlock. Phoenix Patterson has already made the step up as a National League player. It's 1-0 to Kettering. We couldn't be asking for any more than this, really. Uh, point the finger. Tell them they can do even better. Get them back out there. We've got Stanley and Taylor Crossdale warming up. I can't not bring them on at some point during this game just to make sure that we do get all of our heroes all on the pitch at some point or other during this game. Um, but it is the Kingsland goalkeeper with a goal kick. Alfie Payne heads it out to McKendy on this right-hand side. And now Spasov's in. This might be one of the final touches from Spasov because Taylor Crossdale is going to be coming on to replace him, even if he goes and scores a hat-trick in the next five minutes. Um, Dunn plays it forward to Patterson and goes past his man, plays it in, looking for Spasov. It's a lovely pass, less impressive finish. And it is straight at the Kingsland goalkeeper. By the way, did I mention this game is televised? Um, that's how much of a big deal football manager is making of what I'm going to call the latest Lelujo derby. It's a televised game, our first ever game at this level. And we're only on the telly. That's probably why we got the fancy intros. A ball over the top, but uh, there's no one in there to get on the end of it. That's that's bread and butter for Taylor Crossdale when we bring him on. But he's another one who came in a little bit later in preseason. Hasn't had as much preseason time as some of the others. Not yet fully match fit, which is why he was not able to start Spasov getting there before the goalkeeper, but not able to keep it down. But we are we're starting to look more and more dangerous as this game goes on. Kingsland not yet having had a shot, and our XG is already over one. Right, we are going to get Taylor Crossdale on up front. We are going to get Stanley on on the right wing. And you know what? They're the two substitutions I'd have made anyway because those two players were on a 6.4. So we've now got... More heroes on the pitch. I think all five of them currently on the pitch together. I feel like we should just do a moment of appreciation for how great these five players have been for us over the years, um, even though two of them are playing for the opposition. We're going to take Wooten off for boot as the final change. And um, hopefully we're going to see and we're going to see a goal from I want goals from all of them. I want to win three two with all five of them scoring. Um, although we've now had we'd have to win four two because Patterson's already scored. Here is Alfie Payne. In midfield, though, plays it out to Patterson, who's got the overlap from Dunn, and Dunn's got options in the middle. One of them is Martel Taylor Crossdale, the other one's Connor Stanley, and the header goes just over from Stanley. And we are, I mean, we've got to score another goal. We are absolutely dominating this game, but while it's only 1 0, there's always the fear that Kingsley are going to sneak back in. Marriott and Southwell don't need many opportunities. Give them one, they're probably going to score it. And the fact they've not had a shot yet. That's the only reason it's still nil-nil, but Marriott is in here. And I warned you, they don't need many opportunities. The first shot of the game for Kings Lynn, it falls to Adam Marriott, and of course he's going to score. And now we've got uh, now we've got a little bit of work to do. Um it's I mean, it's it's just we've seen it. We saw it so many times last year. We know that's what Adam Marriott does. And uh, 
it's nice to see it this year. I would have preferred it to be a consolation goal, um, but let's uh, demand more of the team. We've gone attacking as well, and a Taylor Crossdale winner now would be lovely. It's a draw. Mm. I will tell him they were unlucky today. I actually don't think we are unlucky. I think we were a little bit sloppy in a game we dominated. To, uh, to not win when we dominated the game the way we did and they didn't even really get a shot apart from the one they scored. Did they? Did, was it only one shot that they they got one shot? Total domination. And you got to look at both of the strikers that were used in that game and potentially ask questions about whether they're going to be the uh, right options for us. Um, the other new guy, Whitaker, is probably going to be looking on there thinking, I'm getting an opportunity here. Fairly soon. Right. Other game, Solihull Moors. No nostalgia here. Let's just go and get our first win in the National League. So, a couple of changes for the Solihull Moors game. Then Connor Stanley now fit to start. So, he comes in on the right-hand side of midfield. And Russ is going to come in and make his debut as the attacking midfielder. Lots of fuss about him in the comment section when his signing was announced. So, fingers crossed he's going to be as good as as I hope he will be. Um, other than that, Whitaker does come onto the bench where McKendie's the other attacking option down there who dropped out of the team from the last game. And um, Carvalho, I warned him, warned him he might not get much game time this year. Let's see how good Russ is going to be. He's another one who's not fully fit. Our pre-season, I think I, um, I ruined us a little bit by not playing enough matches. Uh, but sorry, by bringing in too many trials whilst not playing enough matches. So we've got a lot of players who haven't played a lot of pre-season, a lot of players who are new. It's going to take a little while for this team to get match fit and to get their dynamics up. Expect a slow start to the season this year, which is effectively what we did last year. We started quite slowly and just got stronger and stronger as the year went on. One of our two defeats that we had last year was in our very first game, if I recall. So we only then lost once more as the season went on. So I'm not alarmed just yet as long as we keep getting better Stanley with his first proper effort for us rather than crossing it to Spasov who's free in the middle decides to have a little bit of a shot I hope that's not what the FM21 version of Connor Stanley is like we want him to be an assist machine the assist machine we all knew and loved from the home save a few years ago right it looks like it's a Solihull highlight which I'm not sure how I feel about that they've got the ball but Patterson's doing a very good job trying to win it back off them, although they do end up getting it around him with some quite neat little short passing. And we do need to get this ball off him because they're knocking it around us here really well. And that's a very, very good goal. Are you sure this is non-league? That, that feels like cheating what they've done to us there. This is, this is the National League. We're part-time. Teams can't do this to us. This is, this is going to be a long season. <laughs> oh, this is... I mean, our defence is all over the place. The midfield just wasn't aware it was going on. That was that was troubling. But remember, match fitness and dynamics. It's coming. Malden playing it into Wooten. Stanley back to Wooten again and shoots from range. It's a lovely goal from Lawrence Wooten. It's immediate reply. And we've got some talented boys in our team who are going to be capable of stuff like that. We saw it from Patterson in the last game. We see it again from Wooten there. Um, if we can figure out which one of our strikers is going to be the player who just scores the bulk of the easy goals, we've certainly got plenty of individual goals in the rest of the team. And that's quite a nice combination to have. If we can, we can have the individual goals like we've clearly got, get the set pieces working so we score a fair share of them, and then figure out which one of these strikers is going to get all the tap-ins, we'll, we'll win the league. That's all it takes, that combination. Stanley now on the counter-attack, slots it through to Spasov, who's miles offside. I mean, so offside. I've never seen a man more offside than Spasov was there. I'm surprised there was enough pitch available for him to be that offside. He's got a lot to learn. I'm, I'm very hot and cold on Spasov. He got 25 goals for us last year, but he's one of those very frustrating players who doesn't really do anything else other than grab the goal. And just looked a bit clueless there. Russ with the corner. I'm um, looking for Spasov, but can't find him. And it's Russ who collects again to try and get it back into the area. But he's avoided oh, giving it away. I didn't see Alfie Payne. The red kit blending in with the pitch. Um, red, green, colour blindness strikes again. But it is a lovely ball over the top. And a lovely finish from Slavi Spasov, who I've always rated. Top striker, this boy. Um, but some very good work in the midfield here. Um, for a, is it done or Payne who hits the through ball? It's done with the through ball. Um, and nice ball, lovely goal. 
two one to Kettering as we approach half time. Let's uh, let's not throw the lead away this time. We we're in control of the game against Kings Inn and then let it get away from us. Done with a dominant header forward for Spasov. He's got another opportunity. That's one that he probably should be squaring to. I think Russ is number fourteen. That should be squared to Russ for a relatively easy tap in. Spasov gets a little bit greedy and it doesn't really work out for him. Um, but I am pleased with how things are going. I'll go with my assistant manager for that one. Like to see us up in the playoff spots already as we are. I know we're only two games in, but it's still a big positive. Also a big positive is how much we're dominating for XG again. Just like we did against Kings Lynn. We might not be firing all, on all cylinders for goals yet, but certainly as a team, we're creating a lot. And the goals will come. If we keep being creative, the goals will definitely come. Right. Um, we're going to bring on... Agbon Tahoma to have a look at him at the back. Um, we're going to get McKendy. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. We're going to get McKendy on, but we're also going to bring on Whitaker, and we're going to go two up top. Um, and Whitaker is going to be the advanced forward. Spasov is going to be the pressing forward. McKendy's an inverted winger. Stanley is a winger. So effectively three strikers on the pitch now, but McKendy was brought in to just be a utility attacker. So he's natural in all three of those attacking positions that we're going to be using. Um, and it's our first chance to have a look at both, both Agbon to Homer and Whitaker, two players that I have very high hopes for this season. Whitaker, a lovely ball over the top to Spasov. I think there's questions of offside again. It doesn't look like it's been given as offside. So we'll take it. Um, good pass. Good finish. Spasov, second of the game. He's the one. I told you he was the one, but some very good work from Whitaker here. Looked up, ball over the top. He's not even close to offside. Learn the offside rule, Kev. He is as onside there as he was offside before and just used his pace to create a gap between him and the defender that very quickly ended up behind him. This is a much better performance. We're actually going to drop a little bit of praise here for a first win in the National League. They all deserve a little bit of a pat on the head. Some very good work. A little bit worrying that Alfie Payne's got the lowest rating on the pitch, but he is also absolutely shattered. So it's going to take him a little bit of time, just like everybody else, to get their match fitness and their form and all that kind of stuff up and running. I'm not worried about him yet, because as they say, class is permanent. And Alfie Payne is class. Right. That is a good couple of results in the end. I would have maybe expected them the other way around, but I can cope with this. And um, we're going to do the same thing we did at the start of last season now. Probably play four or five games initially. Try and settle into the league a bit, little bit and probably come back early September. Probably for the Barnet Dover double header and see how we're getting on. See if we're genuinely in another promotion push. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.